Thank you for listening. Praise God. I want to go to Luke chapter 8, verse 22, and I'll read on down to verse 26. Again, this is Luke chapter 8, verse 22 through 26. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he, Jesus, said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water, and were in jeopardy. And they came to him, and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, and rebuked the wind, and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith and they being afraid wondered saying one to another what manner of man is this for he commandeth even the winds and the water and they obey him verse 26 and they arrive now that's the main key word i wanted to focus on and they arrive that whole message basically is saying in order for you to get from where you are to where God wants you, God is going to instruct you what you must do. And he believes in you because he is instructing you something. He has faith in you. When Jesus was confronted in this situation, when he asked the disciples, where is your faith? He's basically saying, I believe in you why don't you believe in what jesus has said to, for them to do now we go back up in verse 22 it says let us go over unto the other side of the lake jesus is not going to say let us go over to the other side of the lake knowing that there would perish no he said let us go into the other side of the lake whenever god tells you to do something he believes that you can do it. He knows that you can do it. But the question is, do we believe we can do it? One important thing we want to remind ourselves is that God exists outside of time. And Jesus was always in fellowship with the Father. At this time, he was already filled with the Holy Ghost. Therefore, he received power. He was in communion with the Father, and he did spend time with the Holy Ghost. He received power because of the Holy Ghost. One thing we need to remind ourselves is that when God tells us to do something, He truly does believe in us. And we should receive encouragement whenever God instructs you to do something. That means He believes in you. He believes in you. He believes in you. We need to continuously tell ourselves that in the mirror we need to say god believes in me you need to look in the mirror and tell yourself god believes in me or else he would not have given me instruction when god tells you something he already sees you doing it god exists outside of time the past the present and the future is all the same to god he's already seen it that's why i believe that he would call it his story history the future is already his story because he's already seen it. He already knows it. So when God tells you to do something, get excited. He already seen you accomplish what you are attempting to do day by day. Praise God. Remember that he is your greatest encouragement because when he tells you to do something, he is actually saying, I already seen you do it. So we need to get excited about that. In this particular story, the disciples failed at that because they were still beginning in the very beginning of their ministry. However, Jesus believed in them because he asked them in verse 25, where is your faith? He's answering a question. Where is your faith? Because Jesus had so much faith. Faith. Think about this. Think about this. Jesus had so much 
faith in the father and had so much faith that they would get to the other side that he actually went to sleep. He did not he did not need to be ministering at that time. He did not need to be encouraging those at that time. He believed so much that he rested. He rested. Yes, it was a, a test, but it was a test that Jesus was hoping that they would pass. He was hoping that they would pass. The Father knew they would not pass. The Holy Spirit knew, but Jesus believed that they would have passed. Why? Why would he say, where is your faith? If he knew they were going to fail, he would not have said, where is your faith? He would have said, I knew this was going to happen. I knew your faith was not going to reach its full potential. But he didn't say that. He asked, where is your faith? Jesus believes in you and I. So whenever God tells you to do something, get excited because God is saying, I believe in you. I believe. I trust you with this information. I believe in you and I know that you're going to carry it out. I've already seen you carry it out. We have to see ourselves in our mind doing what God has called us to do. Praise God. Another exciting thing that we really need to know is that when Jesus, see, God the Father sent Jesus Christ, his son, to save us from ourselves. And then when Jesus left, he sent the Holy Spirit. There are some in the body of Christ that have received that gift. So it's a gift. It's a gift. When we receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we have an option of receiving the gift of tongues. Now, I must speak about this because this is actually the one of the vitally important parts of becoming successful, and that is to be led by the Holy Spirit, to be spending time and much time praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit. You're building up yourselves in your most holy faith, Jude one twenty, and that's what you need to do is when you receive the Holy Spirit. However, there's many who have received the Holy Spirit, but are not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, our names are written in the book of life, and yes, we are destined for heaven. But in order for you to be successful on earth, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter. He's our guide. He's our standby. He's our counselor. He's the one that's actually going to cause us to be successful in this world. When we depend and lean on our own understanding, we're going to fall short every day. But when we lean on the Holy Ghost, when we lean on the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit reveals to us hidden wisdom, hidden nuggets, revelation, what is in the Word of God, the Logos, the Word of God, when we read that, He reveals the Rhema. And the more we receive the Rhema Word of God, we will be able to see into the spiritual realm and hear in the spiritual realm and to actually see ourselves doing what God has called us to do. I encourage you that when you're praying in tongues, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, make sure that you are and receive the gift of praying in tongues. That is the secret to my success about many different things. I would pray in tongues just for. I don't know, a couple of hours a day and revelation knowledge that I did not know a week ago or a month ago, I do know. It's almost like I went to a five-year course in a particular niche or, or um, schooling, but the Holy Spirit revealed it to, to me in three or four months which it would take normally in a natural four or five years, the Holy Spirit revealed it and downloaded it into me within months. There are so many different benefits in praying in tongues because the Holy Spirit reveals to you things at a much faster rate and a much higher understanding. I encourage you to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to pray in other tongues. We need to remind ourselves 
every single day about Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When we seek ye first the kingdom, now the kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. Now, we cannot actually find out God's way of doing things in our own intellect, in our own soul. We have to spend time in the Word of God, and we have to spend time with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals things to us. We know that the enemy, we have an enemy in our life who is the devil. John 10, 10 says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, this is Jesus speaking, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. How can you have life more abundantly? Well, it's good to be saved, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, that our names is written in the book of life. But how can you have life more abundantly? Well, that's abundantly. But how about more abundant? Well, receiving everything that God wants for you is receiving life more abundant. God the Father sent Jesus for our salvation. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit for us to have life and have it life more abundantly on earth. When we receive the gift of praying in tongues, we can actually build up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, and spending time communing with the Father. There's so many different benefits of praying in tongues. I encourage you to uh, download a PDF. You can just uh, type up 101 benefits of praying in tongues, and you'll be able to download a free PDF from a church that has a wonderful revelation of why we need to pray in tongues. And I just wanted to read uh, John chapter 16, verse 13 through 16. And this is Jesus speaking, and it says, How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again a little while and ye shall see me because I go unto the Father. Now Jesus is talking about leaving the disciples, talking about his future when he will be leaving. But he is saying, I'm going to send you a comforter. We read in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, and it says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. However, in order for all things to work together for good, in order for us to have that actually happen in our life, we have to back up and find out the qualifications in order for us to have that. Now we can back up to verse 26, and it says, likewise, the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit also help us our infirmities, our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself should be himself, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the more we are praying in tongues, the more we're communing with the Holy Spirit, the more we are spending quality time praying in tongues, all things will work together for our good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, according to his purpose. So that is the, actually the best way to receive revelation knowledge and the best way to become successful in life is to spend time, yes, reading the word, but also spend time praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. That is the secret of my life. It's actually not a secret. God put, the, put that in his word. But it is something that people really need to understand. In order for you to be successful, spend time praying in tongues. Actually spend time praying in tongues 
because the Holy Spirit knows everything about everything. The Father knows the future. He knows the future better than you know your past, better than you, you know your present. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are in perfect harmony. They're in perfect communion. So the more time you spend time praying in tongues, the more you're going to receive revelation, knowledge, and the faith that you need in order for you to go the next day, to go the next mile, to go the next month, to go the next year, to go the next decade. Why? Because God has already seen you doing it. Whenever God tells you to do something, he's encouraging you. We need to remind ourselves, he's encouraging me because he already sees me doing it. God's not going to tell you something and say, oh, I made a mistake because he doesn't make mistakes. He's flawless. He's perfect. He's a loving father. It's impossible for him to lie. And it's impossible for others to please him, but by faith. So when God releases faith to you and says, for you to do something, he believes in you accomplishing it because he is telling you. He's telling you because he believes in you. That's something that we can actually run with and say, praise God. God believes in me. I better take this information, this word, this revelation, run with it, make sure that this thing that he has told me to do is done in excellence. And the way we can do that is the more we spend time praying in tongues, praying in the spirit every single day. The more we pray in spirit, the more we pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us revelation knowledge, and he's going to give us information that we did not know before. I know at many different times in my life, I spent many, many time, many hours praying in the spirit. What I did not know two or three weeks ago, or even yesterday, I know today because the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. We have connection to the most high God who knows everything. He knows the future better than we know our past and better than the devil knows the past. He knows the future. The Father in heaven knows the future. Our Father in heaven knows the future better than the devil knows the past and the present. So when we're in communication and communion with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ and the Father in perfect harmony and perfect communication, we're receiving revelation knowledge. God, when God tells you to do something, he's basically seeing you already doing it. So we need to be encouraged and remind ourselves, hey, God already sees me doing what he has called me to do, and I am going to see it come to pass. Be encouraged. Stay inspired. God bless you. Thank you for listening today. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name.